Hi everyone, it's Jill with stampwithjill.com and I am back today with a really fun video. Today we are gonna make this card carrier die, which um, we're actually gonna make the foiling and the cards inside, not the actual carrier. The carrier is a die, it cuts all the pieces, all you need to do is die cut it and assemble it. But I wanted to take out the cards and show you what we're gonna make today. Um, we are going to make a hot foiled monogram card and I have two versions, one with pearls and one with a flower on it. They all use the same hot foiling and they make a great gift. So let's go ahead and get started. Um, I have my hot foiling machine here. I'm gonna get some other things and we'll get started. All right, so I have my hot glimmer machine here and I've just turned it on. So I am waiting for it to heat up. And I also have my Platinum Fun Stampers Journey machine here to run the Glimmer machine through, but I'm gonna move it out of the way for a second. And while this heats up, I'm gonna show you how I set up the monogram plates. So the plate, uh, the way I did it was with a piece of washi tape and the frame that comes with the Glimmer hot foil machine and the alphabet dies are what I use, or the alphabet plates are what I used for the, uh, for the monogram. So I held it together with washi tape, but first I'm gonna take it apart so I can show you how I set it up. And it's really, really easy. And in the meantime, this is all plugged in and set up and warming up. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn it over so you can see here, um, it doesn't have to be perfect. Um, I'm also gonna take this off of the tape. So, and then I have these face side down because this is what it's gonna look like on the card. And there's a couple of tricks I've learned here as I've made this a few times already this morning is um, practice, practice, practice. You are gonna definitely mess up a little bit when you're making these. Okay, so I have all of my washi tape off. And the reason why I did washi tape is because you can't see through the foil when you're set, when you do this. So it's really hard to um, line it up perfectly. All right, so I have my letters lined up. And then here I'm gonna just wiggle my frame so it is pretty close to centered. And I'm working off of these two little scallops here. And I want to make sure that the J and the H are about the same distance from that little scallop in there. So the letters are part of the Glimmer uh, Hot Foil of the Month for April. And then the frame comes with the machine. So I'm just gonna grab my washi tape here and what we're gonna do is these are all face side up, so it's the smooth side, and we are just going to put washi tape across the center. And I want it across the center because that's gonna help me line up the cardstock as well. So you wanna push that down because it's not just gonna grab the letters either. So you wanna make sure that it sticks to that and you don't need a whole lot off of each end. So now that I have that set up, I'm just gonna carefully pull it off my table here and we are ready to go. So you can see my machine is now hot and this is all set up. So now you can make multiple monogram cards as a gift for Mother's Day, which is coming up. So, or sisters or birthday gifts, office gifts, whatever gifts you like to give. I like to give stationery as a gift and this foiling is really cool. Okay, so what I learned when I did this is that practice makes perfect. So here was the first time I did it. You can see I got the letters moved. This was before I put the washi tape on, so the letters moved and I've got some foil over here and I've got some foil, you know, and it's totally off center on the piece of paper. Okay, so the second time I did it, it was even more off-centered. It actually got cut off of the paper and I wasn't getting a full, um, the J in particular, I wasn't getting a full foil on the letters. And this actually around the edges will come off so you don't have to worry too, too much about that. But here was the second time I did it. And then the third time, which was almost perfect, I centered it better. Um, I got almost all the letters on there 
And what I learned when I made the card, which this is the card, it's the fourth one, is that I actually needed a shim. So I trimmed this up and cleaned up the little extra foils and I just needed an extra piece of cardstock to make the tension here to get all of the foiling on the letters as well as the frame. So first thing you're gonna do is, of course this is all heated up now and ready to go, but I'm gonna move this a little bit so you can see, is you're gonna wanna cut as many pieces of foil as you need first. So I actually used the rose gold and I'm actually gonna cut one and um, so you can see me actually make it. So you, I this uh, rose gold comes with the machine. You just wanna take some big scissors and cut it out. So you need a piece about the size of the foil, I mean the size of the plate. And it's gonna to stick to the washi tape a little bit, but that shouldn't really matter. Like if you get that little mark, it's not gonna show. So what you're gonna do is the best way to do it is to cut the corners. So you're just gonna to wanna to cut these corners off like so and like so. And if you pre-do it before you do all the washi tape for the size of the frames, you'll even be more ahead of the game for mass producing. So I, I'm gonna show you the finished project all together, but um, I'm gonna make six. So you can see right now that when you put this foil onto the plate, you can't see through it and placing the cardstock is gonna be hard. So it's easy to pick up and move because it's all taped together. So when you put it on your machine this way is how I kept messing up the paper. I'm actually gonna turn it long ways because it gives you more room to work on the platform. All right, so it's all set up. This is, is warm to the touch. You're not gonna burn your fingers if you touch it, but it gives you some wiggle room. So I am putting it right here in the middle. And I'm just gonna make sure that my letters are pretty straight. And then I'm gonna put this trimmed foil right on top. And I'm actually gonna trim a little bit off this edge so I can see the washi tape peek out. Um, it kind of has a little staticky to it, but then you can just drop it down. And as long as you can see that little tiny piece of washi tape, and it's okay if the foil sticks to the washi tape. So now you're ready to hit your timer button and it's gonna start blinking. And I'm gonna put the shims and the cardstock in place. So what I have is some regular white cardstock and it is four and a quarter by five and a half. So it's actually a little bit big, bigger than a four by five and a quarter panel. And I actually just used two pieces and I'm gonna place it with the center of the cardstock uh, uh, pretty close to the center of the washi tape. And the die is in a little bit, so you don't wanna be too far over where you're gonna mess up your end on this side. And that's it, you just put it down. So now I'm gonna put my shims on because this is still blinking and it's still heating up. And I'm just gonna place that on top and then it comes with this clear plate on top and then I'm gonna turn it so I can actually manipulate it with my hands. It is almost done. So there it's done, it stopped blinking. Now, I have a tendency to, this thing moves when I pull it out because it's a little tight. So what I've learned is that I need to put my thumb in the middle as I'm getting it out. It's not that tight, but it's just enough to wiggle a little bit. And like this slides, but now with my thumb there, the paper isn't sliding. So you just lift this up, it's not hot. It's not hot on the bottom. It's not hot to touch and you're, I'm just going to put this in the view of the camera and the trick here is to go slow. So I'm going to get it started here and the slower you go, the better you're foiling. If you're going to crank it through like you're die cutting, you might not get a totally awesome image. So I'm just going a lot slower than I normally would. It's done. You can pull it out. Like I said, it's not hot to touch, it's not hot on the bottom. The dyes do get a little bit warm, but not enough to burn you. So here you can see I'm taking off. So here's the cardstock shim. That's We can reuse that for multiple times. And then you're just gonna lift this up and off. And this time the foil stuck to the actual die. 
but you can also just go like this, pull it right off. Then you're gonna wanna put this back into your machine and have it start heating back up again for your next one. So you can see this just comes right off. It's a little warm, but not enough to burn you. This goes in the trash and now you're ready to go. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and make another one and I have pre-done some extra foil and all this is is a square with the corners cut off about the size of the, and you can see here's the extra trash. I have two pieces, so we're gonna go ahead and do two more. So again, this is a little bigger than your card front size. So this is four and a quarter by five and a half, like the full size, cause then it gives you room to trim. Cause since you can't see through. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna put this, pull this back into the screen. I'm gonna put this on the machine now, and I'm gonna have the letters lined up on the grid and the washi tape stuck out. This is still the same washi tape and the same setup. This way here, they're all the same. So then I'm gonna go ahead and put my foil down right on the edge, and then I'm gonna reuse that piece of cardstock here that I used as the shim. You know, no need to waste extra cardstock. And I just have two pieces here. So they're four and a quarter by five and a half, so a little bit bigger. And we're just gonna go ahead and place that on. And then we can go ahead and push the button while we're putting our shims on here. So you can put the shim down. And then it comes with this clear glimmer plate and that just makes the sandwich. I have to turn it so I can wiggle it out of the machine. I'm sure I'll get better at it with practice. So I'm gonna move my machine back here into the screen so you can see how slow I crank it. This takes about 30 to 45 seconds. So while we're waiting, so this was the one I just did, you can see there's a little tiny bit of foiling on the edge. And what you're gonna do is you need one of these sand and sand erasers. I'm gonna put it up here so you can see it. And you literally just rub that foil right off with the sand eraser. Super, super easy. And there you go. So I think there's a little bit more down here that I didn't quite see. So hopefully that's still in the screen and you can, nope, it's not quite in the screen, but there's a little bit more on the edge there. So there, you can see I erased it. So it's, this is a sand eraser and there will be a link in the description for the products if you need them. All right, so this is ready. So you can see this one kind of slides all over the place. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna put my thumb in the middle and pull this out. And then we are just gonna move it over to the die cutting machine. Now I have two pieces of cardstock in there because I learned that my machine needed a shim. And we're just gonna go really slow. and crank that through like so. You can pull this right out. I can move my machine out of the way. Move all of this out of the way and take the plate off. Take this, this is the extra piece of cardstock that I have as my shim. And then we just lift this up and off. Now this time it came right off the die because the washi tape is losing some of it um, sticky to the foil. And then you just peel this off like this and you get the wow factor. So to then you pop this back into your machine. I'm gonna pull it back in, click it in, and it will start to reheat so you can do your next one while you're cleaning up this one. So the reason why I made it bigger was so I could trim it down and make it into a really pretty card. So I just had my eraser, here it is. So here there's a little extra foil here and a little tiny bit of foil here that I'm just gonna erase off. And then I am ready for it to trim. So I'm gonna go ahead and do this a few more times so we have a full set of note cards, and then we'll come back and finish the project. All right, I've finished up all of the hot foiling, and I have trimmed these down to three and seven eighths by five and one eighth, and I am mounting them on a four by five and a quarter piece of rustic rose cardstock from Fun Stamper's Journey. This actually matches the rose gold cardstock perfectly and creates a really nice pink note card. And there are tons and tons of colors of foil. So I'm gonna go ahead and mount this last one for you so you can 
see how I made the card. So I think the foiling is so pretty and so beautiful that it does not need much of anything to finish your card. So it's really quite pretty. So I have a white card base here and this is just five and a half by eight and a half scored in half. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and tape that right on the front. Uh, I did not use any foam squares for this one because I wanted to keep them pretty flat because they're gonna go into a card carrier. So I'm gonna go ahead and mount this on. And then I made a total of six cards. This one here was the first one I showed you and it has pearls in four of the uh, corners and it keeps it pretty simple. Um, this one, I decided that I'm going to use a flower and a pearl. So I used the Blooming Details die, which is right here. And I just used the smallest flower here and I die cut a matching rustic rose flower. And we are just gonna go ahead and tape that right on here. And I have it right at the edge of the J. And then I have a Spring Kisses flower. And we are gonna go ahead and put that right on the center for this one. And uh, sorry if you hear my dogs jingling in the back, but they are down here stamping with me. So here you can see that. And then I have these cottage pearls here that come in a variety of colors, but there's rustic rose. And we're gonna go ahead and pop that right in the center. So there you have, um, I have, so I will have three of each of these note cards in the container. Okay, so I went ahead and I foiled another panel with no letters inside with the rose gold foil. And I die cut the card carrier die as well as some extra flowers from the Blooming Details die set. So I'm just gonna go ahead and add these uh, spring kisses flowers here to the center and then there is a sentiment set for foiling there's sentiments that you can use with their foiling plates and I went ahead and foiled that at the same time and we're going to go ahead and put that right in the center of the card carrier die and it's going to be a birthday gift instead of I don't remember what I said I was going to make it but I decided to make it a birthday gift um since I used my own initials on the actual samples, I'll have to make a new set when I need a set of birthday, set of birthday cards. I'm gonna just go ahead and put these flowers and pearls on and finish off the bag. The other thing, when I went, actually made all the cards, I made too many. So I found that four cards actually fit better. So I have one, two of these with the pearls and two with the flowers. So when I put those in with the envelopes and I put them into the card carrier, four was a better fit than six. Six actually would have been way too tight. So you can see here that it's already kind of tight with four, but it makes a really nice gift. So four cards in the matching card carrier and what a nice gift this is. So thanks for joining me today and learning about the hot foil glimmer machine. Mm -hmm.